Hey there, crew members. Man, I miss my beard. Sullivan's here. By the way, happy Mother's Day to all those fantastic women in the world who raised us dumb kids. Especially mine, who raised me as a single mom. Takes one heck of a woman. Now, let's get into today's subject. If you have watched the news or if you've seen any meme lately, then you've probably heard of the incident that caused the blockade of the Suez Canal. Indeed, the Ever Given, a gigantic container ship, ran aground and got stuck there for days. All navigation through the Suez Canal got temporarily suspended, causing quite a backlog in the shipping industry. The canal carries more than 10% of the world's trade, and the worldwide cost for the blockage has been estimated as up to $400 million an hour. That's like dumping 1,200 brand new Ferraris in the water every single hour. But such an event comes an obvious question. What happened? Well, the investigations conducted by both the IMO and the SCA are still ongoing. However, we will go over the three most likely factors that could have caused her to run aground. On top of that, I will explain why it was such a hard operation to free her. Without further ado, let's get into it. First of all, a quick overview of the Suez Canal. The canal is an artificial sea level waterway in Egypt, connecting the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea. In other words, ships don't have to go all the way around the entire African continent to reach Europe. It's like a secret shortcut in a race game. But for a navigator, sailing inside the canal is a bit weird. Let me explain. A navigation officer is trained to monitor every navigation instrument at his or her disposal. Death sounder, radar, GPS, and much more. All that to avoid any navigational hazards. But when you're sailing inside a canal, things get a bit weird. Because the coasts are so close to your sides that your radar becomes sort of irrelevant. The bottom is dredged to make sure you have a consistent depth. And the traffic is being controlled by a marine communications and traffic surface. Therefore, the navigation instrument that you mostly rely on is your sight. So ironically, it feels more like driving a car on the highway. Well, a 220,000 tons car, whose maneuvers have a huge delay, and which has no braking possibility. But because of the high risk, their crew cannot do the whole transit by itself. The Suez Company requires a pilot on board any ship transiting there. A pilot is a local mariner, expert in navigating their sector they're covering. Once they come aboard the ship, they are supposed to instruct the captain on how to do the transit. In other words, they're like an obnoxious dad teaching you how to drive. Therefore, if you want to cross the Suez Canal, you have to wait at the entrance and request a pilot, which the company will provide you with a small craft. From there, you just have to wait for the permission to proceed and you can make your entrance. In the case of the Ever Given, they didn't have one, but two pilots on board, probably because of her size. So now the captain has two obnoxious dads to assist her. Lucky her. And let me tell you, their services are quite expensive, and I haven't even covered all the other fees. But here is something that I think is really unfair in the industry. In case of a ship collision or a grounding, the pilot is almost complete instructions of the pilots. But again, we will know more when the report comes out. Now, let's look at three possibilities which might have caused a grounding, starting with the most obvious one. Ship malfunction. Now, I've been through a situation where we temporarily lost control of our rudder, and another similar situation with the propeller. Let me tell you, it really doesn't take long before your ship goes completely off course. Now fortunately for us, we had enough water around, giving us sufficient time to fix the problem. But in the Suez Canal, you don't have that margin of error. Losing control of one of your components, even for just a few seconds, could result in an imminent grounding. Now, was it the case here? Did the Ever Given had a ship malfunction? Well, apparently the shipping agent, GAC, published a post saying, The vessel suffered a blackout while transiting in another lead direction before deleting it on the same day, a few hours later. They later gave some other weird announcement, like saying, The vessel has been moved alongside the banks of the waterway, when in fact she was still stuck. So far, I wouldn't consider them a trustworthy source. A few days later, the ship's technical manager, BSM, told Insider that Initial investigations ruled out any mechanical or engine failure as a cause of the grounding, suggesting there was no power cut. So, so far, it doesn't sound like the grounding was caused by a malfunction. Then let's move to the second possibility, which is... Squat effect. The squatting effect is a phenomenon where your ship gets sucked down by the bottom. Now, how could I explain this phenomenon to you guys? Oh, I know. Time for some DIY. Step 1. Fold a sheet of paper in half. Step 2. Hold each hand on the table so that your sheet forms a shape similar to a tent. Step 3. Gently blow inside. As you're doing it, notice how the tip of the sheet is sort of being pushed down. Well, that is the Bernoulli principle. By increasing the speed of a fluid, 
air or water, it generates a decrease in the static pressure. So going back to our experiment, before we blew under, the static pressure was equalizing the atmospheric pressure. But when I started blowing, I accelerated the speed of the air, therefore decreasing the static pressure, resulting in the atmospheric pressure pushing it down. Now, let's apply that to ships. Similar to a sheet of paper, we have the water buoyancy balancing the atmospheric pressure. But as the ship moves, it will displace the water around it. And because the space between the keel and the bottom is so narrow, the water underneath it will accelerate, which will result in the static pressure dropping and the atmospheric pressure pushing the ship down to the point where it can potentially hit the ground. And the same principle can be applied to the sides. We would then call it banking instead of squatting, but the principle stays the same. If the water on the side accelerates too much, the ship will be drawn to the coast. So, how can we prevent that? By keeping a low speed. Because the slower you go, the less water you displace. Now, at first I wanted to discard this possibility, because like I said, they had two pilots on board. They are local experts, and they should definitely have been more than aware of that factor. Their job is literally to prevent a banking or a squatting from happening. Well, that was until I read in some articles that the last log speed of the ever given was 13.5 knots. If that is true, that means they were well above the safe speed. Now, what possible reason could they have had to go that fast? Well, that will bring me to the next point. Weather conditions. So, multiple media sources reported the presence of strong winds and a possible sandstorm at the moment of the grounding. Obviously, have never faced a sandstorm here in Canada, which is fine by me because... I don't like sand. It's coarse, and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Regardless, when I had the watch, I was supposed to write a weather report in the logbook every hour using the WW code. Essentially, it will tell you from a scale of 0 to 100 how bad the weather is. And every weather state has a number attributed to it. For example, 10 reports the presence of mists, while 99 shows a heavy thunderstorm with hail. Now, a sandstorm is ranked 34. Some of you may say, 34 out of 100, that's not that bad. Well, in such a narrow place? Yeah, it is pretty bad. A sandstorm can potentially completely obstruct your vision. And as I previously mentioned, your best navigation instruments are your eyes. And I wouldn't want to sail there blindly. As for the wind, it really makes navigation tricky. Essentially, the wind will always try to displace an object until it makes contact with its largest surface. For example, if my hand was an object, then the wind wouldn't have a whole lot of surface from this profile. So it would try to realign it until it makes contact with the largest surface. In the case of a ship, the wind will always try to realign it until the ship is perpendicular to the wind direction. It is worth mentioning that the Suez Canal Authority chief declared in a press conference that strong winds and weather factors were not the main reasons for the ship's grounding. There may have been technical or human errors, but he has not given further information. Now, this regarding the wild conspiracies that people have made online, these are three most likely possibilities. What is my theory? Well, I believe that the third factor led to the second one. Let me explain. I believe there was presence of strong winds, which had a considerable effect on the Ever Given, considering how large he is. In response, the pilots probably increased the speed of the ship to counter the effect of the wind and to keep the ship straight. And increasing its speed resulted in a banking, pulling the ship closer to the coast. And that's the reality of navigating. You must always keep a safe speed, but at the same time have enough speed to fight the effect of the wind and the current. And in some situations, that balance cannot be reached. So that's my theory. Please let me know what yours are in the comment section below. But now, let's look at why it was so hard to free the Ever Given. You probably wonder, why couldn't they just pull it out? You know, with a cable. Well, because of this very annoying part of the structure. It's called the bulbous bow and its function is to break the wave effect on your ship. But in my career, I took part in multiple operations where we had to escort a ship through the ice by creating a path for it. But whenever the ship we had to escort had a big bulbous bow, we knew this would be one hellish job. Because the moment it made contact with a tiny bit of ice, the ship would just get dragged by it and easily get stuck. So, if it can so easily be stuck in a tiny bit of ice, imagine how embedded it would be in a big pile of muddy sand. What I'm getting at is what you see here, 
is just the tip of the iceberg. There is actually all of that structure buried underneath it. Now, by trying to pull it out by force, it would have added a tremendous amount of stress on the structure. Just as explained by this maritime historian. And they have to be very careful about this. The vessel is hung up on the banks. The bow is basically in Asia, the stern's in, in, in Africa, and the middle is, is in the middle of the canal. And what you can't do is take a lot of weight off the ends and put a lot of what they call a, a sagging stress on the vessel. You can conceivably crack the hull, cause an oil spill, but worse, catastrophically fracture the vessel in half which would close the canal for months, if not years, to salvage a vessel of that type. So in the end, their best bet was to dig out the bulbous bow as much as they could and wait for the high tide. And fortunately, it worked. But I think all that highlights a bigger problem that the canal is facing. Modern ships keep getting bigger and bigger, having proportions way above what they could have imagined when they built the canal. Just look at this diagram. The draft is so deep that there's barely any water on the sides or under the keel. And the same goes for its very imposing size. So much surface just increases the effect of the wind. So unless they expand the canal like they have done in the past, we might see similar problems arise in the future. So I hope that gave you a clearer picture of the whole event. Like I said, once we get the report, we will have definitive answers. Until then, let's enjoy those delicious meats. GPS said go right. <laughs> Alexa, where's my order from? <laughs> oh. My COVID depression and anxiety going on daily. Oh, that one is sad. Hang on, guys. We'll get through this. <laughs> if only... Thank you for watching. If you like this